In this video, I want to look at three lemonade takeaways from my actuary interview with Shady Josh. If you haven't seen that interview already, release it earlier this week. It's a long interview. So in this video, I wanted to just pick three things that I had really not considered or thought about before that but were important for the lemonade thesis and for my own lemonade conviction. So let's dive into a few clips from the interview and I'll also share my own thoughts about each. And if you want to support my channel, feel free to join my Patreon. There's only five spots remaining at the lowest tier. Every tier, though, does get access to my full Lemonade model, which I'll be continually updating over time as the Lemonade story progresses. Okay, let's dive into the first clip. The, I don't know how it works in the U.S., but in the U.K., typically nobody would buy from an insurance company or a broker. They would all go onto these websites called uh, aggregators. So in the UK, it's one called like go compare or compare the market.com. And so a consumer would go onto that website, search for a policy and find one. Okay. So a lot of um, different quotations come up. Then maybe they'd buy a policy, but it would be through a broker. And then sometimes that broker would feed the premium in through another broker. And then that big broker would then feed like so that would be like a willis marsh aon those big big brokers then they would feed that as a big portfolio of policies through to the underlying insurance carrier so you could have almost like three insurance brokers and maybe the first would take 10 percent the second would take 25 the third one 15 mm. and then that leaves like i don't know 40 50 percent available to be paid to the insurance company and then that company has its own internal expenses of 30 percent so the the figures are just amazing to me this is a really important point to grasp for anyone invested in lemonade it's the difference between them their direct exactly completely direct to, to customer model where all you have to do is open their app on your phone boom you can buy insurance in three minutes versus the all the competitors that have maybe multiple funnel streams, brokerages, sales, sales funnel after sales funnel that are all taking a small commission or cut or maybe even large commission or cut. I just love sales. I love it to death. It's as simple as that. Which really means you have multiple parties in the value stream that are adding no value and but are still taking profits and still uh, costing your customer money. So this could this is this is small detail now uh, as lemonade is small but as they grow and really are head-to-head -head competing with large insurance companies this is going to be a massive massive difference uh, and you see this already you know most insurance companies have sort of an unloved products such as renters insurance is, is a good example where they can't administrate or sell the product for a good enough price and uh, make enough money off it to really care about those products but lemonade can care about those products because the whole value stream is very very lean they don't have these extra sales funnels doubling the price just because they have extra extra people selling the product but doing nothing not actually taking any of the insurance risk not actually providing any value to the customer so this is a huge huge deal over time it will be uh, and and just so interesting so stark and surprising to see his breakdown and some of the numbers he gave so lemonade i think if what they say is accurate that they're able to capture like 2000 data points right if those give a good indication as to true underlying risk then their pricing will be much more accurate mm -hmm. and then that allows you to grow because you're charging the right customers the right premium and that my question always with lemonade is they're okay they have 2000 data points we know they have tons of data but then i I always wonder, like, okay, how many of those data points are meaningful signals or not, you know? And we were we were just, you know, when we were prepping for this, talking a little bit about this interview, one example you gave that really struck me was um, that that typical insurers talk about or if somebody if somebody pays for a full year or if somebody chooses to pay monthly. Yeah. Um, you know, in my head, I just think, oh, there's probably some discount because you're getting more money up front now for the full year versus month, month, to month. But actually, that you you said like the reason that for that difference is um, 
because that person who's only choosing to pay monthly and maybe their funds are tighter and life circumstances, whatever, I'm just sort of assuming, they would tend to have a higher risk profile. So that is a signal, like, that is like a really simple signal that a legacy insurer just through that process of choosing insurance yeah. that they, you guys kind of would capture and be able to and profile on and risk adjust appropriately for. Exactly. So, well, just from an academic uh, or a, you know, a technical perspective, that yeah. is how you price risk, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so what we're talking about there is, as you say, somebody who, somebody who, who can't afford to pay a year's insurance premium probably doesn't have much money. I mean, no disrespect to anyone who's in that situation, yeah. but you probably have less money to someone who says, oh, I'll just, just get it out of my way. I'll just pay. Then it's done. Um, and so that that is a strong indication. The lemonade captures something like you know maybe two thousand more data points than a typical insurer, all while you're doing the sign up process. Say you're signing up for the app or you're signing up for the products themselves. They're collecting these data points that say, okay, did you read the fine print? Where did you sign up? Did you sign up at home or at work or were you driving in a car? Uh, did what time of day was it? Three a.m. or was it three p.m.? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. What kind of Google search search brought you to uh, find the insurance product and to sign up to begin with? All these kind of data points that are part of sort of captured during the sign up process. And I've always kind of wondered, well, how meaningful are these points? As I brought up in the interview there, how meaningful really are these data points? Are they actually useful or not? Or is it because one thing to say, yeah, 2000 data points, that sounds great. But what if most of those data points really don't actually signal anything significant? Then it could be uh, you know, 2000 useless data points or even confusing data points. So that's always kind of been my one concern or question. Uh, but it, it was really encouraging for me to hear this really concrete example of, hey, traditional insurers, they don't have nearly the opportunity to gather these kind of in uh, purchase data points uh, of, of the behavior of the person during the purchase. But one really clear um, data point they do have there is, do they pay monthly, month to month? If they're signing up for an annual policy, do they choose to pay monthly and pay a little bit more? Or do they choose to pay annually and just pay one upfront fee and get the whole thing over with? And it makes sense that legacy insurers would use this because it is it is a system for them. It's very cut and dry data, very measurable, clear data. Just like Lemonade has 2,000 data points, this is one data point point for legacy insurers that they're a, they are able to use. And they are able to then see oh, people that pay monthly tend to be riskier people. Uh, and so they can charge those people just slightly more. And that pool of people that pay monthly uh, have a slightly higher risk overall on as an overall average. Just seeing that kind of concrete example gave me more confidence in Lemonade to say, yeah, this person signs up at 3 a.m. and they Google cheapest insurance possible. And Lemonade's able to determine, yeah, maybe we don't want this person uh, as our clientele as our customer yeah so traditionally telematics is as you say like how fast do you accelerate you know what kind of cornering speed mm -hmm. do you do and that sort of thing but really that is just one aspect of it and it's important but it's i think more important is as we say when i'm when i'm an insurance company i really want to get into like who is this person how do they see the world? What do they do? What are their values? What are they all about? What's important to them? Mm. And um, yeah, as you say, if, 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 if I'm a guy that goes to the, to the, to the bar strip at 3 a.m., uh, you know, let's say the telematics picks up that I've been to the bar strip at 3 a.m. And then I've been sat in my car in a, in a red light district for from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. And telematics records that data, right? Does that mm -hmm. give you a signal as to what kind of person I am? As opposed mm -hmm. to somebody, maybe somebody drives to church, so their their car goes from their house every single week at mm -hmm. half past ten on a Sunday morning, and then it stops in the parking lot at their local church for two hours, and then it goes back home and sits there while they have Sunday lunch, and then it goes to the golf course. Like which person is more risky, right? Yeah. For me <laughs> at least, it would be the second. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the first person would be more risky, and mm -hmm. so telematics really. Uh, I think is about picking up on behavior, not just uh -huh. how you drive, but like yeah. what kind of person are you? And 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 I think mm -hmm. if you have good enough either pricing actuaries or just AI, you can pick up on those nuances 
Uh-huh. And I think that's such a huge um, opportunity for Lemonade. Okay, now I want to talk about the telematics piece because <laughs> this was huge for me. Because uh, as you said, I've always I've thought about telematics really just thinking the actual driving itself. You know, are you going fast, slow? Or are you accelerating left or right rapidly? Uh, all those things, I'm sure, play a part and a major part in the, someone's sort of risk profiling of how reckless or good a driver there are. But um, then beyond that, this was really powerful, the, this kind of description that he gave of, you know, as, as insurers, you really want to you, you want to be like the fly on the wall as if, you know, as if you could follow each one of your customers around as an invisible little fly and uh, just watch how they live their life and what kind of things they do, how, <laughs> what kind of behaviors they show to, to, to accurately predict. Yeah, this is a kind of person I want in my pool of customers who, who's going to be very low risk and very low chance of filing or of having anything go wrong and filing a claim. Or maybe this is a person who's really reckless and really rebellious and really doesn't care and, and is just overall a much risky person i am the danger and lemonade will be able to kind of get a profile of each person be that fly on the wall a little bit uh, just being able to see where and when they drive places using using their tel- telematics so again the contrast of the guy who's up till 3 a.m or all night partying at the bar and maybe even drives home after having a few drinks versus the other guy who has hot chocolate and is in bed at 10 p.m and is up the next morning goes to church and goes golfing and does really safe routine kind of things with his life I mean you get a sense of who the two people might be uh, and then we could have really really powerful signals data signals about how much risk they they might carry and whether you even want to increase the price of the risky customer or not have them on your book of business at all and say yeah this person we really don't want to have here and and actually provide insurance to you because your risk is much higher than we can accurately predict or or can say or can price appropriately for so those are my three takeaways i want to briefly share with you if you haven't seen the full interview feel free to check it out make sure to subscribe like and you can follow me on twitter at paper bag invest thank you so much remember it's in the bag